Mickey, you've been involved for a long time with the Institute of Music and Neurologic Function. The movie, The Music Never Stopped, deals with a lot of the issues that the Institute deals with. And I'm wondering, um, in some ways, does this come full circle for you to see the movie and to see how it's portrayed in the movie? Oh, for sure. I mean, we knew that it worked on us. We didn't know how powerful it really was. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. And where I stumbled upon the power to heal and to bring people out of the darkness was when I played my drum for her. And she said my name after not speaking for three years. I said, wow, something's up here. And that's when I started to get into music as therapy, music as medicine, music as that had that kind of innate power. So, you know, it was a firsthand thing for me. Then I met Oliver Sacks, who testified in front of the Senate about the power of healing, music as therapy. And we brought him to uh, uh, the character in the movie, the real, the real character, to our concert at Madison Square Garden. And he came alive and started to remember the band, but his clock stopped in 68. And so he remembered the band as we were in 68, and the newer songs he couldn't relate to, but he remembered that, he, he said, where's Pigpen? And so he remembered the band when Pigpen was in it. So, but it broke, brought him right out of the darkness and started to talk. It was very animated, and, and Oliver was just thrilled. And I think that's uh, the story. Was that was the narrative that this thing was this movie was adapted from? Thank you very much. And, and, and further, um, it's interesting. There there's been some controversy in this field over whether or not uh, these kind of patients are able to form new memories. And I think. I have a real strong feeling that uh, uh, Gabriel in the movie, or uh, what, what Gary, Gabriel. Gary, the the actual kid, um, he was fond of saying, "Enjoy the ride." Now that that was, uh, I think he got that from a line that I wrote in the '80s uh, for the song "Hell in a Bucket." Uh, I may be going to hell in a bucket, babe, but at least I'm enjoying the ride. So. That rang his bells, and he, and he kept it. It hung with him, and so, it's this 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 science, uh, this infant science is really really promising. I, I think it's really terrific that um, you guys who have done so much in the for your fan base and being able to uh, provide music that you know, indoors and, 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 and keeps people moving and, and keeps them engaged, um, that you were um, excited by the movie itself. When you saw the movie, what was, what rung the bell for you? What, what particular parts of the movie did you think made it, uh, made it good or made it positive for the Grateful Dead and the Grateful Dead legacy? I'll take that one first. I just enjoyed the movie. I loved the story. I wasn't particularly focused on the, the the science of it or the music. I just love the way the movie fell together and told the story. The story itself is a, a really important one, but it's also a good heartwarming story. When when the father called for the tickets for the Grateful Dead concert, the sold out concert, he was in his hospital bed recuperating from a heart attack and he, he it was that important for him and he understood that power. And I thought that that was really a moment for me, it, you know, kind of, kind of symbolized. I mean, we've been following that feeling for years. I mean, it, it's done the same thing for us in, uh, in its own way. So it's, you know, that's a movie, but in real life, it does really enhance enhanced our lives. I can't say it straightened. I can't say it straightened us out. At least not him. No, but, no. Uh, <laughs> we, I didn't say it straightened us out. I said it just made us real happy. It, it made us. It made us. You know, it made us what we are. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You bet. Thank you.